I'm not even wearing like knitted. Should I like wear a shawl or something? People are not going to believe that I'm actually a knitter. Hang on. There you go. <laughs> so ridiculous. Hello, my name is Melanie and welcome to my YouTube channel. I have videos about my knitting and this is going to be one of them. I haven't recorded a video in ages, but you don't care because it's the internet and people don't care about that stuff. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of out of this. I don't know where to start. I have no notes, but I have like all of my knitting next to me on the floorish area. So uh, I guess I can start there. I've been knitting pumpkins a lot. I can show you. So this is one. This is one. This is a fluffy, fluffy little pumpkin. And then this is one. This is just made with super cheap acrylic yarn that I got. So if you live in the Netherlands, um, I got this yarn from Zeeman for like next to nothing. Um, but I thought these would be good to make pumpkins for people to give away. And then of course <laughs> I made one, gave it away and thought, oh shoot, that was really nice. Now I want one for myself. So I made another one for myself and now I decided, oh, actually, I know the perfect person to give a pumpkin to. So, making another one. I think this is going to be the last one. I'm not even sure if I'm, if this is going to be enough. But, uh, yeah, if you do live in the Netherlands, Zaymon is your best bet for cheap acrylic yarn to make pumpkins that you can give away to people um, if you're concerned about giving away your fancy yarn like this this is like way too nice uh this was scrap yarn that i had left from a project and it's just like super nice mohair and hand dyed yarn and i'm not gonna like give that away to people who don't realize what that means i guess so that sounds so snobby and ridiculous but it's true, so. I should rename this. So hello, welcome to Melanie's Yarn Snobbery Hour. Anyway, so that was uh, scrap yarn for a project I did a while ago. Um, this bag is the Honeycomb Clutch by Petite Knit. Well, the pattern is by Petite Knit. The yarn is, um, my hand dyed yarn that I did like years ago. I don't really dye yarn anymore. I've been living in an apartment for two two years now um, that is rented. And I, I am like desperately afraid to mess up the kitchen or just make stains anywhere. <laughs> cause I, I would feel horrible if, cause you know, this is someone else's property. So uh, I live here and all my stuff is here and I totally feel like home is fine, but I just don't want to like, you know, at some point I'm going to leave this place and I don't want to say, okay, bye. Oh, by the way, there's a giant neo neon pink blob in the kitchen that can no longer be removed. So good luck. So I haven't been dying yarn at all in this place. I could if I was like, a careful person and didn't make messes but I'm not very I'm just a bit clumsy when it comes to those things so I'm just you know really I might might one day someday my I might just get an urge to dye yarn again anyway a long time ago I dyed a skein of yarn in this color and um I thought it would be good for this pattern because it's kind of a honeycomb stitch and you make a clutch and you put in a zipper and some fabric. I've done this before uh, with a gray, uh, gray one and it's super cute and fun. I just haven't like done all the finishing stuff with this one. 
Um, and then I thought, ooh, these would be great to give away. The only thing is that the honeycomb pattern, even though it's super cute, it's quite a kerfuffle to do it. It's, um, it's something that you, you can't knit it in the round. So you need to knit it uh, almost like a flat piece. You, you knit one row this way and then you get to a point and then you need to knit back sort of inside out and you keep knitting like this. And then there's one bit where you sort of lock your stitch in. And that's why most sides don't really have a seam and then you end up with a seam here where you lock the stitch essentially. Um, so this is fun and cute, uh, but it's too much work to give away to people who are not knitters. Again, <laughs> welcome to my present snobbery. Um, so Petit Knit has another pattern that's, a, it's also a clutch, but it's a slightly more simple pattern. And it's called the Marie Clutch. And I tried that as well. Um, and I got this. So it doesn't have the honeycomb stitch, but it does have a nice stitch. And this one is knit in the round, so it's a lot easier to do. Um, and it's, I actually think I found this a way more enjoyable knit. Um, and it also looks quite pretty. It's just not as dazzling, I would say, as the honeycomb stitch, but this is quite interesting and fun. Um, but yeah, also for this, I need to get some fabric for the inside. I do have zippers. I um, I really, really enjoy going to secondhand stores or here they're called Kringlopwinkles, which I guess would translate to like circular something stores. The idea is when people have like stuff in their house that they no longer need, they donate it to the Klinglopwinkel and then the people who work there sell it. And usually people working there are people who um, kind of need some assistance in getting a job for whatever reason. Um, so they're like accessible jobs, I would say. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a good cause. So it's kind of like a charity shop in the UK, but they don't necessarily raise money for charity. Um, anyway, when you're in chat or in the like secondhand store, they have lots of re, no, you know, not recycle, but stuff that people no longer need, which apparently includes um, craft stuff, and you know, a lot of it is um, knitting needles and not circular knitting needles but the long flat knitting needles because everyone at a certain point moved on to circular knitting needles so there's like lots and lots of straight needles in the uh, second hand store um there's lots of acrylic yarn to be found as well so or like crazy yarn you know if it's like um they'll have like one ball of fluffy red uh or one ball of i don't know gold sparkly yarn or something just like really random stuff because it's obviously stuff that people had in their house and didn't want anymore they also have zippers sometimes so uh it's you know i find the second hand stores are great to just quite frequently go on a saturday just go you know muse meander around for uh for about an hour and i find loads of stuff there um blank zippers i have so many zippers now uh, for these bags um but i also find a lot of um like those pyrex balls uh or the the like fancier ones the milk milky white pyrex balls with the painted flowers on the sides i don't know why they're very vintage they're very good often there's like you can tell that people took care of them but they're just not very, really in fashion anymore. And I love them because they're great. They're not plasticky. You can put your scraps in and then just like stick them in the oven or stick them in the microwave. They're perfect. They can go in the dishwasher. Nothing happens to them. They're sturdy as ever. And for some reason, people get rid of them and then buy plastic, which is ridiculous, but you know. 
it's good for me. Anyway, so I have lots, lots of zippers to put in these. So I was thinking I could knit a whole bunch of these for Christmas gifts um, for people. So I think these would be nice, nice little baggies that you can put like makeup in or other things. I have one and I have all my sunglasses shoved in there. They're quite roomy and of course the yarn stretches, the fabric won't stretch when you put some fabric in, but you can put like a little bit of room, uh, extra room in there. So yeah, these are really good. I think this pattern is more accessible than the honeycomb uh, version. So it's a recommendation. Other things that I've been knitting on, uh, I finished my, I can't, I think this is a Friday tea. This is also a pattern by Petite Knit. Um, it's like a tea type thing uh, with, the sleeves come to here for me about. So it's a very nice uh, autumnal um, tea sweater type thing. Um, this was horrendous to knit. So it has some sort of, I think this is called fisherman's rib. I'm not too sure. I'm kind of out of the knitting lingo and all that stuff, but I'm getting back into it, so it's fine. But this is so much work. Um, it's like every other row you have to do knitting and purling and then the every uh, every six rows you do two rows of colour and oh my goodness this was such a kerfuffle and it just took forever. Um, it gets really sort of like crinkly when you're knitting on it so it looks tiny and for the longest time I thought this was going to be too small on me. It's fine and I was very very close in just ripping the whole thing um, because I was worried it wasn't going to be big enough um, and it was just no longer fun to work on. You start off quite well I think and then you kind of not even when you get to the sleeves but when you get like here and then the rows get so so long and it's such a slog and I know other people who've knit this pattern and it's just I don't know it's not not a fun knit but it is a good it does look good I would say and the um, the neckline is very chic and I don't know the finishing is all really nice and although I have to be honest I didn't really um after a while I stopped following the pattern because I was just doing my own thing uh but I do really really like it and you know it's something that will get a lot of wear but uh yeah knitting it was not great I think this is the Friday tea if not I will put it on the screen what the actual name is. It's also by Petite Knit. Petite Knit has like a lot of things that are wardrobe staples, like big grey sweaters or like nice, nice looking cable sweaters or you know things like this that you are just they're great for like wardrobe staples, but not everything is super fun to knit on. So a lot of my colleagues are having babies. Um, I don't know why. I don't think they talked to each other and made an arrangement, but it just sort of happened. I'm sure it has to do with Corona and people, um, you know, kind of putting their, their whole lives on hold during the panini. And uh, now they're uh, getting back to it. So, yeah, I just know lots of baby people who are having babies or expecting babies or whatever. Um, and so I thought I'll knit some baby hats. Now the uh, like the best baby hat I find and that I and my sister, my sister is also a knitter. Hi Steph. Um, we love to knit people the baby texture bobble hat which was some free pattern on makezine.com or something. If you get find the Ravelry link, there is a link to the website where you can find the pattern, but the pattern itself is not on Ravelry. And I think that website has been abandoned or something, or 
I don't know what's going on, but it's free, but nobody's put the pattern on Ravelry and you know, nobody's really taking ownership of it. So anyway, that's, that is there. Uh, the only downside of the pattern is that it's seamed two pieces or you knit two flat pieces and then you seam them together. Um, and I thought, well, since it's a hat uh, and I hate seaming, I'll just try and recreate the pattern, but then knitting in the round. So that's what I did. And it actually worked out fine. I think when you seam it and knit it flat, it's a little bit more like that for some reason. I guess like the seaming does something to it, but it actually it's fine. You know, this is the baby's head and then you just tie a little bow in it and they're great. I had these for my son when he was born um, seven years ago. So I've been knitting these a lot. And I only recently have done the whole conversion to a, a, a knitting in the round pattern. And I absolutely recommend it. Um, it's not hard if uh, I can tell you the secret. So <laughs> there's, um, there's two flat pieces. And then if you take one of the flat pieces, you know that there's extra, an extra stitch on either side because those are the stitches that you need to seam. So if you're knitting in the round, you just omit those stitches. So there's, um, yeah, on every flat piece. So when you're knitting in the round, there's four stitches left, less than there would be if you were knitting the two pieces. Um, and then you really just continue up until you get to about, I think for the back piece, like 33 stitches and the front piece, 22 stitches. And then you decrease them till you get to 11 stitches on both sides. And then you just kitchen and stitch them. So on the 22 stitch side, you do uh, knit two togethers and then on the 33 stitch sides, you knit three together and then you end up with uh, 11 stitches on both sides and you can kitchener stitch those. And then you just I-cord some uh, cables and or ties and then you sew those on. So there is like some sewing, but it's obviously minimal. There's no seaming the sides of the hat. So perfect. So I knit another one um, and I was very excited and then I kind of lost steam and I haven't made eye cord uh, bits for this one yet. But it's fine because I have, you know, most of these babies are still cooking. So they'll just have to wait until I'm finished <laughs> with hats for them. Um, I'm knitting also for family, of course, because I love knitting for family. And I'm making a cardigan for my niece who is three years old and uh, she loves the color pink and I have lots of pinky pastel-y um, pieces of yarn left over. Um, so I have a whole bag, fringe bag of just like little balls of leftover stuff. It's a dreadful mess, but uh, yeah. And I had I ordered a whole bunch of mohair to go with it. Yeah, just like these tiny little things. And I had a whole lot of white, uh, and that was um, what's that from again? I think it was like a bag of, you know how you have mini skeins? They're like. 20 grams there's also something called a micro skein they're 10 grams and when i was dyeing yarn i wanted to order mini skeins to sell uh, and i accidentally ordered a whole bunch of micro skeins which is not exactly what i wanted but um i thought oh it's fine i'll think of something that i can do with it and i never did so i had like a whole bag of Micro white micro skeins uh, and so I've used them in this project it's the I think this is I can't 
can't remember what the name is. I'll put, I think it's like a rose cardigan or something. I've knit this for some people in the past uh, for babies in different colors, but all like in a unicolor. And this time I've decided to stripe it. And it's really cute because it has these little eyelets on the sleeve increases or yoke increases. There is uh, still a button band that I need to put on when I'm finished with it. So that's gonna be a lot of work. Um, but yeah, it is almost finished. And I did see her recently. I did a little try on session and it seems to be going to fit, her, seems to fit her perfectly. It will, um, when I block it, it will be a bit bigger, but that's fine because kids grow massively anyway so yeah that's just how it goes with kids I think so I haven't recorded a podcast in like a million years and I'm just hoping I've done a good job of recording and everything's fine <laughs> I'm just so worried that I'll have like gone through all of this to end up with nothing but I think it'll be good um Drink some tea. So, um, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you'll know that I used to be an absolute coffee fiend. I would drink so much coffee. I would make maybe two entire French presses of coffee, fresh ground coffee, French pet press. And I'd drink two of those per morning. <laughs> And then sometimes I would think, hmm, do I need some more coffee in the afternoon? And uh, last year I decided I wanted to stop drinking coffee because it was not really agreeing with me anymore. And also, uh, coffee is just weird. You know, people say coffee gives them energy and I felt that for a long time, but the weird thing is coffee doesn't really give you energy it just masks the there's all these receptors in your brain that sort of tra keep track of how tired you are which help you get sleep in the evening and coffee kind of blocks those receptors so you don't feel tired even though your body is getting tired and it was just messing with me so i stopped drinking coffee somewhere last year and i felt awful felt so awful <laughs> and I thought this is not good if coffee makes me um, if this is the effect of not drinking coffee then it must have really been messing with me and so for four months I felt pretty tired and really struggled uh, and then after four months it was fine and so I basically don't really drink anything with caffeine anymore. Um, I'll have, sometimes I'll have some like decaf coffee and even then I'll notice like, oh shit, there's caffeine in here. Cause there's like a little bit of caffeine in decaf. Or if I have a black tea, I'll notice there's caffeine in that. Um, I don't, I never drank cola cause I don't like the taste. Um, and I, w I would never drink I used to drink like Red Bull when I did night shifts, but that was like 20 years ago or something. So I wouldn't drink that anymore. Um, it's so chemicals, disgusting. Um, but yeah, so I drink a lot of herbal teas and, oh, this is so good. I found, um, cause I'm always like jealous of people who have like, super nice teas um, when you're like watching uh, a podcast, but they're always like in, in Canada or in the States or in the UK. And then now because of Brexit, stuff from the UK is impossible to get here. It's just so expensive, like shipping's expensive. And then when you get, you get it here, it takes forever. And then you have to pay import fees. It's just not worth doing it, like getting it. But I finally found this lady on uh, on the internet who makes her teas. And if you are interested, I know you are in the Netherlands, 
The shop is called Troost and Lood. I'll put a link in the doobly doo down the video. Uh, and this is a raspberry mint tea. It's so good. And if you are ordering from her shop, make sure to get the happy birthday. If you like a little bit sweet stuff, get the happy birthday tea because it tastes, literally tastes like birthday cake. It's so good. Anyway, it was a tea tangent. Um, I did more shopping, actually. I've been really good for the longest time not to buy stuff. Uh, and so that's been pretty good for my savings. Um, but I don't know, sometimes I get into those like moods and suddenly I'm just buying everything. And then um, there's a lady on Instagram that I follow and uh, she has like all these crazy knits. She's Danish and she's called Lerke. I think it's called Bagger or Bacher. I don't know how Danish people would pronounce that. Um, but uh, yeah, and she wrote a book and it was, I think it was launched last year, but it was Danish and then there was a German version and then there was a Swedish version and then there was a Finnish version. And then finally last month, there was an English version also. I'm a bit, it's a bit of a shame, I think, because um, all the other versions are like an entirely pink book with green letters on it. And for some reason, this cover looks different. And I really liked the pink one, but I guess it's just easier for me to read the um, the English the English book. So I got this one. And it's very much like a like a coffee table book with pictures of her crazy knitwear. Uh, and if you follow her on Instagram, you'll know she has like things that are like fluffy and lots of beads. I'm trying to find one with beads. I can't. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> she has kids as well and they're absolutely adorable and they're in the book as well. And there's patterns and just instructions on how to do things. And can't find the, oh, never mind. I really like like this, like the fluffy coat with the loop yarn, loop knitting. I want to make one of those. Um, oh, here's a, here's one of the beads. Crazy beads. So fun. There's also, there's like in the back, there's one picture. I don't know if you can see it. And she has like this giant green sweater with a big, is it a turtleneck? It's like a big cowl neck. But it looks so comfortable. And I want to make something like that. Um, and I think I'm just going to buy some green yarn and just not even bother with a pattern. Just like go, just wing it. I don't know, I might be a little bit overconfident. Um, but it's, uh, I might, um, yeah, I think I'll do, just do that. Anyway, so that's not the only thing I bought. I bought, uh, oh yeah, so recently, this weekend, I went to my local yarn store. And this is going to be a little bit of a rant. Now, I have an idea. In a perfect world, if I had my own yarn store, what I would like that space to be. I would like it to be cosy and have soft, pretty lighting and just be, have, you know, have nice yarns, different companies. I, I would have samples that are enticing, some books, but not too many, um, just some basic equipment. It's not like everything of a thing, but just the things that I think are good to have. So I think you can figure, you know, you can work with, you don't need 
everything, right? You don't need a million knitting needles. You can figure it out with like one set of circulars, I think. Um, just like fun things. I think if people want a whole bag of drops yarn, they're not gonna go to a yarn store and buy it. You go online and you find the cheapest price and then you get that. But if you go to a yarn store, you want to be inspired and see cool stuff and see things that you wouldn't necessarily think of uh, when you're sitting at home. And, you know, I would have maybe a little tea bar and some biscuits that, I don't know, maybe someone who has a biscuit shop down the street makes special sheep shaped biscuits and some candles because you know, I think knitters like cozy. That's why we knit. We sit inside and we knit for hours on a sweater to be cozy. And I think a yarn store should reflect that. And I just find a lot of yarn stores don't have that. There's like white walls, white cabinets, not not all of the yarn is exactly inspiring. Some of them are really good. Some of them are just not so good. And I, I understand it's hard to have a shop, but you know, some yarn stores are really good. So why do the other ones have to be so crappy? Like, of course, your shop is not going to be... Um, I don't think you're going to get very rich from having a yarn store, but that's, I don't think that's the point. Um, but anyway, I just, I just don't get it. Like if I had a fantasy yarn store, I would just do it differently. I don't have a yarn store because I'm not, I'm not a person who has the skills of having a shop. Um, I am a software developer. That's how I make my money. Um, but, you know, in my mind, I would just do things differently. And maybe I'm just, I don't understand how the world works or something, and whatever. Anyway, so this weekend I went to a local yarn store. I hadn't been there before, um, but I think that shop opened like a year ago or something. So I went inside and I was just looking for some more yarn to make pumpkins. Um, and I thought, I'll get some nice yarn in the yarn store for pumpkins for me, and then I'll get some cheap acrylic for pumpkins for other people. <laughs> Apparently that's how I roll. Um, and then I ended up with this fluffy yarn from Durable, which is called Teddy. This is not a fancy brand. This is like some, it's like a budget yarn. I think this is a Dutch brand, um, but it is very soft. It's all, this is polyam made anyway. This is not from a sheep, but it is very soft. And I think this will make like a really cute, fluffy pumpkin. And then I found this from Katia. It's like their concept yarn. It's it's a blend with cotton that's recycled or linen recycled. No, it's recycled cotton. And it has like tweedy bits in it and it's it's really cute. I thought this will be nice as well. But that yarn store was a bit weird. It's not very inspiring. She didn't have amazing stuff. No hand dyed yarn at all. And like I you know, not every store has to be a hundred percent hand dyed yarn, but I think some of the some of it could be hand dyed yarn. And then I asked for some, uh, what's this stuff called? And then I asked for some ukulele and she didn't have it in the store. It was behind the counter. So I, I just found that weird. Like, why do I need to ask for something that's just typical, something that you would buy to wash hand knit sweaters? Wouldn't it be better if you had like a little stand with different 
washy type things that I can smell, you know, because they have different flavors. And now it was like, oh yeah, I have this and this. I was like, um, I guess the basic you clan them, that's fine. Anyway, I just, it was like a weird yarn store experience. Rant over, I think. <laughs> mm. Anyway, and then there was another thing that I was buying, which is beads, because I did a little bit of bead weaving years ago, and for some reason, suddenly, I felt like doing it again, and then I realized I wanted different colors than I had, and so I got some more of those uh, super tiny Mayuka Delica beads, and um, I've just been bead weaving. <laughs> And I got some patterns on Ravelry and I did a bunch of stuff. And then I thought I'll make my own little pattern. So let me just, it's all socked and knitting that I'm not ready to show you. It's a little house with, I'm not sure if you can see it. It's a little house with some smoke coming out of the chimney. I just find it so cute. Um, yeah, so I've been making these and I think these, I think I'll make some um, stitch markers for Christmas presents for people who I know also knit and then I'll just make earrings for people who I know don't knit but do wear earrings and I don't know, it's just a really fun thing to do and it's not that expensive to get into if you're used to buying like yarn prices for things because if you get like a bag of five grams of beads that'll you know it'll get you pretty far and if you find a good online shop I paid about three euros and these are like super fancy beads you can get way cheaper beads and you know have lots of fun with that and spend a lot less money so beads are good to get into and then you know if you spend like 20 euros and decide you don't like it you just leave them in the cupboard and then <laughs> maybe pick them up in three years time mm. this tea is so good um I'm also working on a sock project at the moment, but it's a, it, it's a lace sock and I designed the pattern and I'll show you when I'm finished with it because I might release this pattern. Um, yeah, I probably will release the pattern, um, but I just need to finish it. I finished the other sock for this and then I thought, Maybe I can get away with releasing the pattern, just knitting one sock. And then I thought, no, that's just stupid. <laughs> I need to knit both socks and have pictures of two socks. So I'm doing that. It's almost finished. Thank you for listening to this super rambly video. I hope to see you again soon and that it won't take forever for me to record another video. Probably will because all of this knitting took a long time to get together and I don't think I'm that fast. Although I have to say this pumpkin I knit in less than a day um, just because it was so easy. So this is a tip. If you're knitting pumpkins as home decor, get super chunky yarn like this, large knitting needles like this and you'll be super done super quickly and there's so much fun i love these pumpkins i wish it could be autumn like the whole time just nice weather not too hot not too cold you could wear a sweater if you felt like it and all the decorations are fun <laughs> i think that would be perfect like can i live in a place where it's autumn all the time please That'll be my favorite anyway that doesn't happen in real life and we're moving into winter so i hate winter i hate winter so much 
Ich bin Passion. <sighs> Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my videos, I'd recommend subscribing. Subscribing is free and is easily done by pressing the button that says subscribe. I'll see you next time.